Also, I, I just want to point out that I got somebody to say Steve's right. That's Yeah, that yeah would, we're not going to be able never, to the end of that. We can cut that, right? We can fix that in post. Well, hi there. You're watching and or listening to Podcast is Broken, a weekly podcast where we try to make Canadian news funner. Some people don't like that, but I still like saying it. My name is Brittle Star. My name's Steve Boots, and I think we make it more. <laughs> wow. Just such an attention seeker. I've had my that na- in my back pocket for days. Just waiting for the right day, eh? <laughs> my name is Lisa. I think we make it mirthful. Oh, I like mirthful. Mm-hmm. And we have a special guest today, and uh, please introduce yourself, uh, a special guest. Hi, my name is Dave, and I'm a doctor, but not that kind of doctor. <laughs> Worst pickup line ever. <laughs> Plays one on TV. I own a or house be- in the suburbs, so obviously it works. Oh. Okay. It's working out all right. Uh, yeah. Well, you're Paul writing, by the way. Oh, Ooh. there you go. I assume you're going to vote for him. Yeah, uh, all of a sudden, I really hate socialized medicine and I really like roads. Is that weird? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot with people in that writing. It's. Are Aren't the roads wider? Of, are you a big fan of thoughts that can be limited to three words? What a wacko thing to say, Steve. Slogan City. <laughs> Slogan City. Uh, for all of you uh, joining us, uh, David is here to uh, keep the ship on course and provide some actual content uh, so the Steve and Lisa and I can just slack off for this episode. Sweet. Um, Bye. <laughs> we are going to try to keep the chaos to a minimum as such, but the mirth, as Lisa suggested, will be at fever pitch. Um, and we'll keep the slide whistle at the ready. I like the slide whistle a I like lot. That. I f- like the best thing I li- about the slide whistle was, was watching the look of David's face where he thought, <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, yeah, that whole credibility thing. Yeah. I could be playing, I could be playing Resident be Evil. I, I passed up Resident <laughs> Evil 5 for this. the racist one uh, for this. I mean, if you're gonna learn, if you're gonna learn one thing on this podcast, it's that pod, slide whistles are available for twenty dollars on Amazon. <laughs> That's right. And there's a lot of life choice regret. <laughs> That's right. And there's so an well. affiliates link that we will put in the comments for those slide whistles. <laughs> I did a PhD. You don't have to school me in life regret. You know, no, you don't get much more regretful than a PhD, and you end up writing nonsense for newspapers. I'm like, I'm glad I did that PhD. Glad well, the, the federal feeling- government funded that. We're feeling great to have you on now. That's just great. That's awesome. Very nice to be here. Um, For those uh, who don't know your dulcet tones, I don't think you said your full name. This is David Muscrop, of course, and he's Uh, amazing. David Robert Hollingsworth Muscrop, although it leads me to believe I probably shouldn't share my full name for scam purposes. That's all it takes to scam you is someone to know your full name? My God, he knows my little names. If you wanted to pepper your SIN number in there too, that would be cool. We expect that of all our guests. And your mother's maiden name. Yeah. (laughs) These are all first pet street you grew up on. (laughs) Don't answer any of this stuff. Just a fun party game. He's thinking. I'm obliging by nature, so I was about to. (laughs) Oh, I'm an obliger by nature. Is that what you said? (laughs) I'm obliging by nature. Obliging by nature. I like obliger. I I like the conflict avoidant. Believe it or not, which you wouldn't Uh know from the internet, but. Nope, definitely not. <laughs> no, perish the thought. Um, <laughs> let's get down to business because we do have people complaining that we don't get down to business sometimes. It was back when we had more joy in our lives. Um, let's get down to business. So we're going to talk this episode, we're going to be talking about how uh, in light of the sinking ship that is the Liberal Party in Canada, Federal Liberal Party, uh, they have recruited as such a ringer, a whatever the whatever the similar term is for someone who saves pirate ships. I don't know what that term is, or just ships in general that would save a baseball team, like a ringer. Is that what they call a ringer? Right, ringer is like a baseball. It's a baseball term, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and and Sports. like the ship saver is a frequent role. Is it? No. Oh. I was thinking Coast Guard. Like, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Nobody has any idea what you're talking about. I should have workshopped that some more. What I'm trying to say is that, uh, as, of course, that uh, Mark Carney has been asked to be the pl- the political advisor to Prime Minister Trudeau. And everyone kind of saw it coming. Um, but it's still worth talking about. 
So I thought we'd just give a little bit of a, a little bit of background on Mark Carney for people who don't know exactly what he's done. Because, I mean, it is on, it's, it's impressive. I think it's impressive. Uh, Harvard, Oxford grad. Eh, anybody could do that. Um, worked at Goldman Sachs for 13 years, eventually being promoted to managing director of global investments. Um, he worked to help post-apartheid South Africa gain access to the international bond market and worked to aid Russia during its 1998 financial crisis before they went evil. Um, well, eviler. <clears throat> November, <laughs> the bots, uh, the bots. The range of facial expressions right now happening on Mosgrove's face. Remarkable. I know, he's just, I'm just, uh, this is, I'm just putting, it's like putting chum in the tank. Just waiting for the shark. <laughs> um, he, of course, as well, uh, was on the, the eighth governor of the Bank of Canada. Um, <laughs> which is a global male called him the youngest and least experienced of the developed world's central bankers. It's a bit of a backhanded. Good for you, son. You're crap. Um, Good boy. <laughs> and then, of it's course, like, he was oh, on to, in 2013, was the governor of the Bank of England, the first non-Britain to hold the position since its formation in 1634. So... I, I wouldn't mind highlighting also the title of his doctoral thesis is The Dynamic Advantage of Competition. He is the liberaliest liberal who is ever liberal. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. But I mean, those, those are notable accomplishments. I mean, to, to be oh, governor. He, he, he's just like the definitive market guy. Yeah, yeah. So is, is it, is it, uh, was Trudeau and the Liberal Party were they right to bring him on? What do we think about that? It's, you, that's a good start. That's great. Start? <laughs> I, I don't know what the rules are for jumping in. Oh, you can just jump. Guests, guests get honors. Fight yeah. for your life, Dave. Barely <laughs> sheathed outrage. <laughs> you, you've got more letters behind your name, so you go first. But, <laughs> yeah, a lot of good they're doing. <laughs> So for years, we were told that this guy was the great white hope. This, this is what the liberals had been floating for a long time. They've been soft launching him forever. It's mm -hmm. like the dragons in Game of Thrones. Like the dragons are coming. The dragons are coming. And then meanwhile, it's just, it's not dragons. It's something else. This is a family-friendly podcast. <laughs> if you've seen anymore. the show, you know. It's not dragons. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's penises. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. We're jumping right into it. All right. Let's yeah. go. I thought finances were going to be boring. That's okay. neither. No, no, no. That's we, neither. This was a real short launch from Mark Carney to It's Penises. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's adjacent. But, but so then it was always, you know, well, Mark Carney run. And the joke was, what does this mean for Mark Carney? It was always, what was, because he was the heir apparent and everything right. was through the lens of Mark Carney. And he was meant to be the great technocratic, this was implied, technocratic solution because all it takes to solve problems in the democracy is an expert coming in to expert it. And now he's arrived as an advisor to the Liberal Party and the leader of the Liberal Party, not to the Prime Minister, not to the Government of Canada, which I think is a little bit mm. inappropriate. I would rather him gone through the government because the Liberal Party is the government. And so now the test is, well, can he He's focused on growth. The job is specifically, you know, touring the country, figuring out how to, uh, to grow the economy. And my initial thought was, uh, you guys have been in power for 10 years. <laughs> so uh, I think you should have done it 10 years ago. No, and now, now this guy's is the moment to, to crack in. that egg. In the ninth, you know, the, uh, you know, late in the late uh, to keep with your things, uh, you know, in the, in the ninth inning, when you're trailing by 20 runs, points in the polls. <laughs> and and win the game. I'm like, all right, good luck, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's sort of that. That's good. What you're uh, not my inspired that's by my another dude in a suit? <laughs> He's but, a banker. Is I only know a little bit about him, like really, really just factoid stuff about him is sort of following in the past a little bit. You're right in the sense that he's always been kind of floated as this idea of like, he's going to give you the, 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 the white knight. He's going to come in and he's going to save things. Um, that's not a baseball reference, by the way, white knight, something else. Um, and at the same time, I, I, I don't know, like I, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy to be a leader. Do we think he's just doing this to sort of, is he waiting his turn? Does he feel like this is his in and then he's going to take over the leadership of the party? Is that the idea? 
Well, he's been paraded around the last little while, right? As if this is almost the pre-intro to the intro. Um, I, I don't know. He's I, he's the he's the insider's insider, right? Like he is so connected, so in line with the business community, with the halls of power, and so. Like, it's strange because they're framing him as like, we're bringing in an outsider with a fresh point of view who's also been around the party his entire adult life. Mm. Right. And so it's it feels very much like this is the best they've got. And so they're cashing it in now. But what I don't understand is like. Why now of all times? Why? We, see, we seem to be asking that a lot in the last little while. Why <laughs> yeah. now of all times? Is it just because the news cycle is a gigantic mess and so they're trying to take advantage of it? Or are they trying to, I don't know, reframe the narrative? I don't know. It's got a big Hail Mary feel to it, to me. It does. That's another sports reference because um, I'm so into sports. But it does have that sort of feel where it's like this is our last ditch attempt to like regain traction somehow or, 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 or like firm up the foundation a bit more. I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me. But who, who's this trying to win over though? The party itself or people watching from afar? Oh, I think a lot of people struggling with pocketbook book issues are going to think, yeah, one more banker. That's going to turn this whole <laughs> ship around. <laughs> Has anyone read his book? No. 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 I, I, so I read his book in whenever it came out, 2021, something like that, 2022. Mm. Uh, value, parentheses, S. Values. Oh. And, yeah. Or and the... It was a, you know, mostly a climate and, and progressive policy book. And the argument of the, the central thesis of the book was that we need values in our politics, not just value. Oh. And in our society <laughs> and in our marketplace, it I can't just it. be about value. It needs to be about values. So how many pages did it take him to get to the point he made in one word on the cover? <laughs> And well, yeah. at one zero and like 300, you know what I mean? It was, it was <laughs> and he's, I, I will preface what I'm about to say by saying he is clearly very smart and accomplished. Sure. And I truly believe well-meaning human being. I kind of mm. like him as a human from, from the mediated sense that I've got from him. I kind of trust that he's sincere. I bear no ill will towards him as a person. And I truly believe he's a genuine uh, person who cares a great deal about this country. I also believe he's wrong and the wrong guy for the moment because there's a certain knife uh, market credulity that he brings, which is, well, we just need to induce the corporate world to be kinder and gentler and to bring about a market-based solution based on value so we can all live together in a happy capitalist utopia. And my response to that is the last 300 years. <laughs> like, what about the last 300 years leads you to believe that this is going to happen? One of these days, companies are going to stop being evil. You know this. They'll be visited by three ghosts in the night. <laughs> I, I just name me one thing we've developed that we didn't immediately turn into a tool for evil or porn. This podcast. This. How long give has it, it been around? Give it well, time. We were just talking Stuart, about it. Give it time. <laughs> I was like racking my brain for something, and the first thing that popped into my head was pasta. And then I was like, no, you can buy the dirty <laughs> pasta at Spencer Gifts. <laughs> and there's the homophobic pasta company remember there was a big thing about one of the major uh italian but anyways but my, my, my argument is basically that you know if, if you I believe think that's just this the name of the time, noodle i don't think it's actually homophobic <laughs> showing up at marches <laughs> Sorry. That, that that had layers to it that uh, <laughs> You can die. Everyone at home, you can digest that one later. It's fine. I just, um, oh, I, I just, I, I just doubt. The, uh, we oh we have God. fun, but we learn. <laughs> Second part's new. I, I just don't buy this idea that you can have a kinder, gentler, gentler capitalism that will assuage the fears and frustrations and concerns and anxieties of a population here and around the world who feel like they've been ripped off. And he's pushing, if you go and look at his, his tweets, his kind of saccharine, uh, small L stroke, big L liberal tweet, probably shouldn't say stroke, slash a big L liberal tweets, 
they they've got this this sort of like well we're going to we've got a great competitive advantage in the changing world translation climate change is going to screw a lot of things up and we can do all kinds of shipping through the north now mm. we can grow lots of wheat for the world that where you're not going to be able to grow it anymore that's i'm sure that'll be fine we got all this fresh water should be fine when things go pear shaped and it's all about well we're going to you know be able to thrive in the changing world and like first of all no we won't it's going to be a mess for everybody. Mm. Second, uh, the system that got us into this mess probably won't get us out of this mess. And have you met us? So uh, it's just frustrating to watch and and I just don't buy it. And, uh, but he's selling it and I believe he believes it. I just don't think it's going to work. So do you think there's any way to sort of disavow the liberals of this sort of idea of just markets, 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 or are they going to ride that ship until it's in? You know what I found really interesting is if you look at his messaging, he's talking about globalism and free trade. And so he reminds me a bit of an early 1990s uh, free trader, a sort of Fukuyama-ish figure who believes that, well, you know, communism is now dead and all we need to do is liberalism and free trade everywhere and everything will be fine. And, and China will bring it, will, will join the party and Russia will join the party because everyone's just going to have a big free trade party and the rising tide's going to lift all boats. It's going to be great. And But at the same time, the liberals just slapped 100% tariffs on Chinese EVs because they're like, mm-hmm. oh, right, politics and mm-hmm. the domestic auto work, uh, auto industry in Canada. So I think kind of Trudeau gets it, but I'm not convinced Carney gets it. My question is, like, why, why would a guy like Mark Carney jump on a what seems like an evidently sinking ship? Why is he doing that? Is he just thinking he's like, do you know what? This next five years is a wash. Six years is a wash. So let's not worry about it. And I'm just going to get in there and start putting in some roots. Is that is that the idea, we think? That's open to anybody. It's not just, David, you don't have to answer all of our questions. Well, I think, I mean, he's an advisor, right? Mm. So there's that slight distance where I'm not responsible for anything. I'm just giving some suggestions. What they do is what they do. Um, but yeah, I, I think like- it's. I feel like every party has people like that, though. People who sort of float around and weigh in all the time, but don't wear any of it because they're just waiting for their time. Mm. Right. Like this is like a figure that exists in politics. They always like like they always remind me of like who's the uh, worm tongue in Lord of the Rings, just like behind the king telling them what to do all the time. Just yes. Yes. But like, We're only doing sports references, Steve. Too. That's it. Oh, sorry. That butch was it up, swing boots. Did you not that see the figurines in the background? Like, <laughs> butch on, it up, boots. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Hey, man. Cool people like Lord of the Rings, too, probably. Yeah, nerd shit's cool now. And I got to say, I, mm-hmm. I, it's a welcome development. There you go. <laughs> see? Provided no one bought the video version of this episode, they'll, they'll agree with you. Um, <laughs> so, but, but still, like, I... I I think if it, if the liberals lose the election, that kind of stink is going to splash back on Carney though as well, right? Is it not? How could it not? This is my question. Like he obviously wasn't ready to join as an MP. He wasn't ready to join the cabinet. He wasn't ready to run for leader. Obviously, Justin Trudeau's not going anywhere until he loses. So if I were him and I had political ambitions, I would go anywhere near this right like yeah i I would make sure it was encased in concrete and left to decontaminate for a long period of time before i went anywhere near it it's weird to me because he's kind of half in and half out he's not running Mm. he's not in cabinet but he's now a prominent part of the party machinery not even the government the party and he's clearly outed himself as a liberal so now he's going to wear some of it i think without actually being able to run. So I don't, I don't really get the strategy there. So what's the, like, is it, can you see any upside for him? Cause I'm trying to figure it out. Like he was sitting on the outside as the obvious threat to Trudeau, sort of the shark circling in the waters. He had, as far as I understand it, a pretty sweet job going on in the UK with their, uh, I think sovereign wealth fund or something like that. Mm. Um, why would he do this? What's the upside to him? That's what I just cannot find, no matter how hard I look. I feel like I'm talking too much, so I'm trying. No, to you're talking too. great. Listen, you know way more We're than like, the three. Give us three answers, of us. Dave. Give yeah, just, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I'll give you the the charitable and the uncharitable answer. I'll give you the charitable answer first. I 
the charitable answer is he truly believes he can make a difference and he wants to try to help and grow the country's economy. I mean, the charitable answer is he believes in it and he just wants to do it. It's funny because when you spend your life thinking about and talking about politics, your default te- tends to be, what's the cynical angle? You know, you're like, who's it versus? You know, you ever watch something mm-hmm. that's always sunny in Philadelphia? I'm like, who's it, who's, who's it versus? <laughs> or who's this against? <laughs> what's the cynical political angle here? When occasionally the answer is someone just really believes in something and they're doing it because they think it's the right thing to do. That's the charitable answer. The uncharitable answer is he thinks he can have it both ways. He thinks he can come in, raise his profile, establish his liberal bona fides, bona fides, as the, as um, people like people us would say. say. Yeah. Not normal people. The non PhDs. Not people normal currently people. Currently screaming at their <laughs> car radios. <laughs> Not bona normal people. Fides. No. Go to hell, Muskrup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> These doctors uh, with their Latin. Uh, Honey, turn these on books TVO. Aren't props. These <laughs> these books aren't props. <laughs> They're just all up. No, we don't talk about TVO anymore because I got shit canned. Well, we appreciate that, but I'm allowed oh. to make jokes about it still. Yeah, you um, are. <laughs> I am too, actually. Can I tell I you one nice fair. thing about being shit canned uh, f- yes. from places? I mean, but that makes it sound. I they 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 moved money around and now they run other people than, than me <laughs> out of your pocket to someone else's pocket. Funny that. You know what? Can't take another six thousand dollar hit. Uh, <laughs> we got to cut it. We got to cut it. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, he thinks he can have it maybe both ways. That That's the, the uncharitable reading is he can both come in, establish his credibility as a liberal, establish his name a little bit, you know, mark his place, piss on the hydrant. And, and then when it all goes, uh, pear shaped, walk away and say, well, you know, I wasn't running, you know, <laughs> I didn't make this mess. Okay, but if that's, if that's his plan, what is, I mean, we're going to, it's all conjecture. What is the liberals plan in bringing him in? Like, what is the point of that? Are they trying to lean towards being more corporate friendly with the idea that we'll make corporations nicer to people? Like, I don't understand the point of the libs bringing them, bringing him in now. I think that's their philosophy. Oh, okay. And they believe that they can do that. They've always believed that under Trudeau, that they could do both. And as part of the broader strategy, like, has anyone here ever played uh, f- uh, video games, like fighting video games, where you succeed me. by... <laughs> any, any nerds here in gamer chairs? Anyways. I... <laughs> you, you ever play one of these games where you win by executing an elaborate series of button presses in a mm, particular different right. orders for different combos? Yeah, those and you always have that that pose, <laughs> and then you always have that bozo in the corner. What we call button mashing, just pressing all the <laughs> buttons in the hopes that something will happen. The liberals are button mashers right now. They're just pressing all the buttons, hoping something will happen. This can I get? Stuff. I want to get conspiratorial for a second, uh, just yes. for a second. Love this. Um, I think, or I could be convinced, because I'm easily convinced, easily led, that. Someone like Mark Carney publicly makes a, a show of joining forces with the Liberal Party when they're at not their worst ever, but pretty close. And he does so because he feels he looks at the picture, looks at the game, and thinks, you know what? Next election is not going to be until next year. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And I might be in with a chance. I might be able to lead this party to victory. If I lead this party to victory, I can walk into the prime minister's office and sit down in his chair. They will, everyone will welcome me in because I'm the guy. It'll, I'll take credit for it. I've saved the liberal party. I feel that there's a potential that he's privy to either some really good educated guesses or information that makes him think, okay, I'm going to, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it's actually going to be a turnaround in the next year. I mean, it's, possible but do you think there's i don't know so you think he's trying to get onto a rising tide because like i I don't think anybody's like catch the liberal fever (laughs) no no one's catching (laughs) that well they are they're trying to get vaccinated for it Um, (laughs) but i think the uh no i'm thinking that he's he's thinking this is going to be an opportunity for another feather in my cap i'm going to pull this party out of the toilet and we're going to win and it's going to be a minority maybe or whatever, but we're going to win in the next election. And all that credit is going to be down to me. 
It's going to be like, everybody hated Trudeau. Everybody was tired of blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But I came in at the last minute and I turned this party around. But Therefore, how? I don't know, Lisa. <laughs> what, what, what sorcery is going to happen between now and next the October? Economy. Well, I mean, you look at you look at the, what happened. I mean, it's obviously you can't, it's not going to be capitalism. identical. <laughs> like fucking lefties. Um, <laughs> you look at you look at what happened stateside in the U.S. and you think to yourself, like a matter of less than two months ago, everyone was like, "We are doomed." There's absolutely no way no one's going to be able to beat Trump. It's just the t- scales are going to tip, and he's going to take it again. And it's going to be absolutely horrible. This complete reversal of that feeling now, whether or not that happens in November, we'll find out. But it certainly seems much more likely that the Democrats are going to win. So I'm saying maybe there's a possibility of something similar happening here, not necessarily being changing leaders, but something else happening that's going to shift perception and shift uh, the public's view of stuff that makes them going to go, okay, well, you know what? I don't, I'm not going to vote for Jagmeet. Uh, and, but I'll, I, I guess I'm voting for the liberals now, whoever the MP for that is. I mean, I th- go ahead, Dave. Well, I was I, just some, do you want a, some fun historical context? Always. Oh, there's two of us in, in 20. I wrote the worst piece I ever wrote. I wrote around 2015 and it was called, uh, something like what's the point of the liberal party. Right. And it was for the national post for reasons passing understanding. And I'm guessing money, <clears throat> money. And I was getting started and they said, yes, but my argument was basically the liberals were moribund. Right. And I looked pretty stupid in 2015 because I said it at the wrong time, but I don't think I was wrong. And if mm-hmm. you look, there's a scholar at UBC, a guy named uh, Ken Cardi, who's done work on this. And he wrote a book called big tent politics. It's somewhere over my shoulder that, uh, and read by the way, and not, not just there for a show. <laughs> Actually, a lot of them are just there for show. But he's, his argument was basically like, oh, the liberals win, but they kind of shrink every election. They, every mm-hmm. election, they get a little bit smaller. And every election, they used to be a broader, more national party, and now they're kind of constrained. Uh, and now they're basically a Quebec party. And then, you know, some Ontario here and there. But they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so at 2015, that seemed like bullshit. But then in mm-hmm. 2019 and 2021, you're like, oh, maybe. Right, they had fewer votes in the Tories mm-hmm. in both 2019 and 2021. They were saved by the fact that they had them in the right place, mm-hmm. but they had fewer votes. Never like back to back winning the election with fewer votes than the, than your main arrival. Not great. So they're they're in structural trouble over mm-hmm. the course of time. And you know how many prime ministers in our history have won four elections in a row? None, Anyone, I guess. It's more than none, but it's big, but smaller than a Buick. <laughs> gonna hazard two one it's two uh, it was uh, John A. McDonald and uh, then Wilfred Laurier the guys on uh, the they money did, the guys on the money <laughs> they did it back to back that's that's how you get on the money uh-huh. but they, they did it back to back and then and it hasn't been done for now more than a century and you know Mackenzie King tried it and Pierre Trudeau tried it and Stephen Harper tried it you know, good luck, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you, if, you're, if you get 10 years, you're lucky. No one's giving you 14 mm-hmm. or whatever. Do you, you buy into that sort of conventional wisdom of Canadians vote a government out rather than in and that sort of thing? Yeah. I get sick of people. Mm-hmm. Because you end up wearing everyone's frustration after a period of time, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, they blame you for everything. They blame you for everything. Everything they're pissed off about, they blame you for. Uh, fairly or unfairly, provincial or federal, municipal or federal, it doesn't matter. Like my, my garbage didn't get picked up today. Damn Trudeau. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter. And, and Trudeau looked unbeatable in 2015, 2016. He was Teflon Trudeau. In 2017, things start to, the Teflon starts to chip. The coating starts to wear off. By 2019, it was gone. 2021, it was gone. Had Shear or, or O'Toole run slightly better campaigns, they would have probably become prime minister. I think it's just over. The writing's on the wall. If, I, if it were me right now, I'd be trying to walk away with the furniture. Be stuffing a U-Haul full of... I'd say clean I mean. out Sussex, but I don't. I think that's already been done. <laughs> no. it's, yeah. just, it's all rat shit <laughs> just, and asbestos. Just mold at this point, yeah. <laughs> but this election is terrifying. Like, I know we say that about every election, and it's like, oh, this is the one, you know, we need to... But this election truly is terrifying. 
with what we're up against. This isn't just, you know, oh, conservative ideology. This is like a whole next level potential human rights issues. <laughs> like, I mean, I th- so what do we do? I think that might be part of what holds the liberal project together is this defensive position against this le- this sort of more sort of hardline conservatism that the, the Canadian conservatives have been bringing forward. I think there's a lot of people who are voting liberals just to keep the conservatives out. Oh, a right? thousand so percent. I think yeah. that's honestly a big part of what's holding the liberals together at this point is just like, look, it's the best we've got. So eh. <laughs> like it's inspiring. But like that doesn't you. happen in Alberta. I don't want to bring it back to Alberta, but like we don't have a very viable liberal party federally in Alberta. Right. So it's like mm. you're voting conservative or you're voting NDP. Um, And so I think Dave's right. Like the liberals have shrunk in those areas because maybe the liberal parties for the West, at least, are not viewed as viable to to vote for. So I don't. Yeah. Where are they viable subnationally? Maybe Ontario. Like this is one of the curious things about about the, the party system. Party systems vary from province to province and. The theory behind our electoral system known as uh, first past the post or single member plurality is that it tends towards two party systems, right? They, they tend to produce ten, two party systems in theory, except for they haven't in Canada nationally, but they kind of have provincially, not everywhere. Mm-hmm. But Alberta is functionally a two party system. British Columbia is, a, is functionally a two party system. Ontario used to be functionally a two party system. Now it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but still more or less. And, but liberals really aren't succeeding at the provincial level anywhere. And they're in r- rough shape. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, you know, nationally they've held on. Historically, one of the reasons they were so successful in Canada, and they are, here, let's, let's give it up for the liberals. They are one of the most dominant political parties in the history of the democratic world. There's Japan's liberal Democrats, there's one or two parties in Europe, and there's the liberal party in Canada. They've governed a, a tremendous amount, but a lot of that was driven for much of our history by the national question in Quebec, mm-hmm. which has you know become more complicated in recent years with the rise of separatism and some shifting yeah. fortunes. You know, Quebec went to the NDP for a period of time and then receded, and so that's why the Liberals are so paranoid about Quebec because if they can't hold Quebec, then then they're donezo, right? Then they're in like mm-hmm. forty seat territory, which could very well happen if the Bloc starts to surge. Which is why now is a really tricky moment because the when the NDP left the supply and confidence deal, the bloc said, ben la. Uh, Allo, bonjour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Mais voyons donc. laughs> we're just, we're, you're going to get mail. So. <laughs> we won't be able to understand any of it. It's fine. It's called courriel. I'm uh, bilingual. I will or, translate. <laughs> or in, in France, French uh, email. Yeah. Um, you're going to get mail. <laughs> Please uh, forward your concerns in French to Lisa. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> but like the bloc w- stepped in and said, okay, well, we'll bargain. Sure. Right? And now it's interesting because they uh, are positioning themselves for the next election. And Trudeau is in a very tricky spot is if you make a bargain with the bloc, it might buy you a little bit longer in parliament, but at what cost? And I was joking about mm-hmm. this on Twitter recently. I'm like, what could possibly go wrong making a deal with separatists? <laughs> Name never one blown time up that's backfired, right? <laughs> so Although, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's as wacky as things look right now. I think f- at the fundamental, at the, at the level, uh, the, the foundational level, it's actually even more precarious. So I'm I'm curious about your thoughts. Do you think this is a continuation of the decline that was going on prior to Trudeau coming in, like under Ignatieff and Dion? Like, do you think Trudeau just bought them some time by coming in as this sort of charismatic leader? Or do you think it was a reset? I think he bought them time. I think he came in when people were starting to get sick of Harper because Harper had been in power almost 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So you get the 10-year itch, uh, which you can treat. There's a cream. There's powders. There's powders for that. Oh. It's a salve. It's yeah. a, salve. a balm. Okay. Balm. <laughs> but he came in and and he was the great hope. And but keep in mind, throughout that election, the 2015 election, the New Democrats looked like they could form government for much of it. It really wasn't until later in the election that the wheel started to fall off the orange bus, mm-hmm. and the NDP kind of blew that one. 
And in an alternate universe where they ran a better campaign and didn't, and didn't, I think, fall into the trap of running to the right of the liberals and to the left of the Tories trying to effectively be a liberal party, mm. when we already had one, they might have become government. And then would that have killed the liberals? Maybe. Maybe it would be the conservatives replacing the NDP right now and it would be the end of the liberals. So uh, I think they're, they're going to have a hard time coming back because I think they're in structural decline. I want to just go on a slight tangent if we can. Um, you're the, it's your microphone, right? You're allowed to do whatever you want, aren't you? We've, got, we've all got microphones here. This I'll is a, a socialist podcast. <laughs> um, it's not a socialist podcast. Please Much don't. Much to Stuart's chagrin. <laughs> exactly. Some of us are trying to make money. Um, <laughs> not just get money all the time. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I was going to say the slight tangent, if we can, uh, you know, every, I'll, I'll try to f- articulate this the best I can. In 2015, you had Harper, people were getting sick of him because he had been around for so long, for sure. But there was also the barbaric practices hotline and all that kind of stuff. There was a, there was a weird starting to turn on the conservatives. It became a little bit, I don't know what the right word is, but weird. More they embraced repu- culture war stuff. Yes. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was getting kind of weird. And so that was a big impetus, I think, for, I think, for Trudeau's victory in 2015 is people were like, no, 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 we're not doing that kind of stuff. We're not going down that road. Since then, the Conservative Party, I think, in my opinion, have gotten weirder um, to the point where, you know, we all know Polyev stuff and, and, uh, and uh, Andrew Scheer saying, you know, yeah, listen, baby, I'm American, but I'll give that up as soon as I'm prime minister. Don't worry. Little stuff like that that was just like weird. And it was like, you guys are weird. Um, And then right up to, uh, I mentioned before speaking to a a fairly prominent conservative MP and his words to me were, uh, this is like a year and a half ago, were that I just have to wait for for the fucking lunatics to get out of the party before this party can go forward again. He has since posted in lockstep with the conservatives. And I think there's, that's what creates that sort of panic where people are like voting for the liberals. And I'm happy. I think I said last week, I'm happy if it's liberal or NDP government, I'll be absolutely happy. I love the whole Canadian-ness, at least to varying degrees of it, where it's like, we're, we're trying to help each other. We're trying to, we got a rising tide is kind of what we're trying to do here. And I see the panic when people look at people like Polyev and the conservative party and go, well, I've got to get the most bang for my vote here. I've got to, so the Liberal Party is, is currently is the best bang for the vote. Will that change? I'm not sure. But is, is that something that, like, are we overhyping that? Are we overhyping this, this concern, this worry that, that things are going to go to hell if the conservatives get back in? Are they, are they going to be powerless? What's the story with that? The, Whenever I'm asked to say something nice about Stephen Harper, which happens sometimes, people are like, okay, well, you know, you're a lefty. Can you say something nice about Stephen Harper? Uh, I think of two things. One is I think his conception of federalism was responsible. He was very, very cautious on federalism, a lot of bilateral deals, a lot of quiet federalism. He was managing the provinces moderately well, and I really respected his approach to federalism, which is very hard to do. And the other thing was he, for, he acted as kind of a Tito in the, in the party. And he, he really held it together because the conservative party had just been cobbled back together after decades of, of, of fracture, right? It had been put mm-hmm. back together and now he had to see if he could keep it together. And part of keeping it together was winning. And part of winning was keeping the crazies in the closet, mm-hmm. right? Like lock them up. And he mostly did that. And Polyev can he and will he? Well, there were some tests of that already. When Arnold Viersen went on that podcast and started spouting off about his, you know, right-wing fundamentalist Christian bullshit, uh, the, obviously the conservatives were like, nope, we ain't doing that. <laughs> but so, so there is some, some hope that maybe he's able to restrain those elements and focus on pocketbook issues in the economy, but then you see him himself indulge in culture war, anti-trans nonsense, and you know his caucus is full of anti-choicers, and you think, well, 
do we really believe that they aren't going to become a problem? And it really bothers me when everyone says like, <clears throat> the conservatives won't touch abortion, don't worry about it. And women are like, yeah, but you know what? I am worried about it. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. And and I think there's a lot of potential there that once they do get in, at some point, they're going to indulge their worst impulses, which is what happened to Harper at the end. Because mm-hmm. then once once the things started to go to pot, he lost control and they went down hijab ban, mm-hmm. barbaric cultural practices, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So I am worried and I don't think anyone should take the conservatives at their word that they're not going to, to go down that route. Yeah. I don't think Mark Carney is going to save him. <laughs> unless he knows. He unless let's go banker. back to my experience. Unless he knows something or he's is, or nice is he's, he's planned ahead and he's like, this is going to happen. Maybe he's a genius. Do the it three has, ghosts have any openings in yes. the booking calendar? No, exactly. but it has to be in conjunction. Like, I have to believe that this is in conjunction with something else that we don't know about. It's not just like, here's Mark. And everybody goes, oh, okay, great. There has to be other stuff happening in the background. Right. Like I think every each of the parties now has to be going, Okay, we've got like a year and a bit. We have to start figuring out what our game plan is. Right. Like, please, please. There's there's that. (laughs) And you don't need another dude in a suit. You need to build some sort of a movement. You give need to give people something to give a damn about to get them off the couch, get them to show up to events and, you know, barbecues and knock on doors and all that stuff. You need people to actually care. Yeah. You don't need another dude in a suit saying, well, if we just ask the businesses to be nicer, they'll be nicer because that's how things work. I don't think Carney's a rock star enough to do that as much as maybe he's a lovely guy, but I mean, he doesn't have anybody outside of Politico. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the movement point is really important when the liberals leveraged their 2015 strategy to have, you know, supporters uh, ahead of 2015, rather, you know, supporters rather than members. They threw open the doors of the party and anybody could be a supporter and and help pick a leader. That was their way of gathering a bunch of data because they had a a slick data driven machine. Right. And they're very good at leveraging data and they're very good at targeting. Uh, Something I like to say often is politicians say they want you to vote. That's a lie. They don't care if you vote. They care if you vote if you're one of their supporters. Otherwise, mm. you can go straight to hell. They're not going to waste their time on you. Uh, the liberals are very good at targeting and mobilizing by by the, at the level of postal code. Very fine green distinction. So that's key. But they don't have the deep movement. The conservatives are building a movement. They're building a they're, they're doing it at community centers. They're doing it in church basements. They're doing it in factory shop floors. They're building a movement. The liberals are not building a movement. Trailer Nor the New Democrats, the by the way, which is insane. Yeah. And that's the problem. That's my mm. worry is where's the oomph on either side of the Wait, far right? You, you didn't see the image, image of Shagmeet Singh walking <laughs> into the sea? <laughs> <laughs> Like that, I that will didn't work for you? free for like either party. I don't even care at this point, but I will work for free to be like, no, <laughs> like, what are you? Th- somebody just, needs to tell them like, no. Receding into the ocean, like the end of a Godzilla movie. It's like, what are you? I like that. There was a video they posted. It was today, I think, or yesterday, where it was the the pullout from the oh yeah, me the close up, which he's a good looking man. Don't get me wrong, he's a good looking man. <laughs> but I thought to myself. I this is goes back to this is a, another tangent compared to talking about Carney, but it goes back to the last week's episode where I said I the biggest problem I had with the we're tearing up the deal video, the deal's done or whatever it was called, was that it framed Doug Mead as just another dude who wants to be prime minister. That's all he wants. Mm-hmm. And I'm I understand there's a balance there to being like you need a figurehead, you need someone to aim aim well, that's the wrong words. You need someone for it to uh to to look towards to identify as the brand of the campaign and, and of the party, but it just doesn't, I don't like it. I don't like it. So, I don't like it. I don't like it. There were two things I loved about that video. One was that he highlighted a number of leaders more successful than him. <laughs> <laughs> but the other that I loved is they showed footage of people winning elections. And then at the end, it was just him walking through a crowd. And it was like, oh, you don't have, don't have footage of that, huh? this is not good for you guys what scares me is that if you look around at the 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 federal the major federal parties it it looks like pierre polyev has a movement and a plan and it doesn't look like anybody else has either of those things and it's like okay so we're just we're just figuring this out on the fly 
And one thing is with the liberals is governments get old, right? They they age and uh, they start to age over time at an accelerated rate. By the end, they're aging in dog years. And that's because it's a really hard thing to do to be in yeah. government. It's a really hard job to be a member of parliament. Mm-hmm. It's a really hard job to be a staffer. And people get old and they get tired and they quit or they get sick or they die or they get a better job and move on. And before you know it, it's like 14-year-olds are running ministries. <laughs> like, like the bit from the the Thick of It movie, uh, right? It's like the the vice where the vice president's chief of staff is a is like a 14 year old kid it's like yeah at some point all the 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 adults have left and it's all of these party stalwarts who have been promoted up and they just they aren't it and mm-hmm. you know katie telford has been there now for 10 years almost which is crazy it's too long to be doing that job it's 10 years is too long to be a prime minister and you just you at some point you're like you got nothing left in the tank and Pierre Polyev has a lot left in the tank. It's methane, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but he's got a tank full of it. And well, he has a sorry, he has a movement and a plan, but he has a movement and a plan to win. But that's it. There's no plan after that, right? So And what he that. does have, he's he's not gonna tell you. Doesn't no. have it. He's doing Thatcher cosplay. He's doing yeah. Ayn Rand fanfic, you know, yeah. and it's awful. But people are falling for it. That's the thing. Yeah, they're so. uh, yeah, they're pissed He's, and they're tired and yeah. And and, and but then liberal partisans, like I'm talking about, including some senior people who are very smart, come in and be like, well, let me show you this graph. Like, <laughs> okay, you are fucking cooked. Yeah, here's a if graph that shows you were awesome. I'm going to show you a graph. I love like, a good pie chart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to my neighbor who's really pissed at the interest rate on his mortgage. And he's going to blame you for it. Yeah. He's not going to blame Doug Ford. Yeah. He's going to blame you. The yeah. neighbor There's is me. There's so many liberals Gosh. who think they just need to explain better. It's like, no, no, not the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of need to have, we talked about that before and you kind of need to have, it's like with his, the capital gains video that Trudeau did, it was like, it was a good video, but that's kind of like the, it's the story underneath the headline. It's to me, it's like the Beaverton love the Beaverton. All I want is the headline. The person who writes yeah. the story. Good for you. Occasionally I will read one of those stories. Maybe, maybe, but I really just need the headline. That's all I need. Uh, just give me the joke and I'm moving on from there. And it's, it's kind the of onion that model. I did. I, I think I've read maybe one full article from the onion in my entire life. Yeah. I was just otherwise. Oh, yeah. if you want to give yourself a gift, get the onion in hard copy. You can order it in hard copy now. And it's yeah. fantastic. Do you want to hear the two funniest things the onion ever did? Yes. <laughs> wait, no, no, no wait, three. No, I changed my mind. Yes. Real quick. It's too late. Uh, actually, happening. one of them was was post nine eleven. It was God clarifies do not kill rule. And the article was genuinely very, very funny. <laughs> oh my God. And then the second best headline ever from the ending was man finally put in charge of struggling feminist movement. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest thing they ever did was click hole. And oh, yeah. when oh, click hole was going, they had um, a piece called what I learned in my year as a commercial on a commercial whaling ship changed the way I saw the world. And then it was the entire text of Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Like literally the entire book pasted (laughs) to the article. (laughs) I I just think there's nothing funnier than that. To me, that is the the apotheosis of of the apotheosis of comedy. I I I just every time I have a chance to shoehorn that into a conversation. (laughs) Do you guys want? Well, you did it so gracefully. Do you guys want to hear the three funniest things from the Onion? Anyway, Um, hell yeah, penises. Penises. So hey, let's finish off the discussion today with uh, some predictions of what we think is going to happen as a result of Mark Carney becoming political advisor to Justin Trudeau. Uh, what do we think? What do we think is going to happen? I, I, my prediction maintains that he knows more than we do, and he's, he sees the writing on the wall for something, some big changes, and he's thinking, I'm going to be the guy that's going to be taking some credit for saving this party. And keeping the weirdos out. That's my prediction. My prediction is that in about a year and a month's time, I will just be sorely disappointed at everything. <laughs> that's my well, prediction. That's, that's sad. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. 
And I, I'm going to throw a little bit of a Hail Mary here. I don't think it'll actually happen, but I think it's possible and I'd love to see it happen. He's like a compassionate capitalism kind of guy. And the liberals, I, th I really think the heart of why they're bringing him in is they have a dearth of new ideas. They just need something. They got mm. nothing. I'm going to say shot in the dark. They bring forward some sort of a pilot or proposal or something that looks a little bit like UBI or some sort of minimum income. Mm. I like that. I, I'd be surprised, but like, maybe. Hello, liberals. Are you listening? Well, it'd be the best. He'd be the best person to sell that kind of thing, really. Yeah. Exactly. He yeah. would give it credibility. Oh, and Steve. based on his background, dude might actually buy it. You gave me a little bit oh. of hope there. They need okay. a big idea. Yeah. Liberals, please be listening. Dear God, please be listening. Just pilot it. It'll go great. It always does. Every time it ever gets piloted. You know, if we do UBI in Canada, though, it's going to be at the expense of us gutting everything. This is my problem with, with it is that I remember talking to Armin Yelnitsyan about this and she was like, we can't afford it. Like the cost yeah. of it is one thing, but what we're going to end up doing is gutting everything to pay for it. And it gets, because the, the way we'll do it is going to be awful. So mm -hmm. I mean, I, but, but I think, I think Steve is right. Now that I hear that, I think Steve is right, at least right about the big idea swing. Like because they need something increments. big. Increments, yeah. yeah, yeah. They can't. If Carney comes in and be like, you know what, I think we're going to ask companies to pay a little more so that we can all. This is my banker vote, so that we can have a clean planet and comp compete in a growing economy, which we're going to diversify and trade freely with our allies. And everyone's going to be like, I want to fucking die right now. <laughs> so bad <laughs> I, I think what's your prediction big swing but my prediction is nothing is going to come of it my prediction is they're cooked it's mm -hmm. game over mm -hmm. anyone who knows the history of canadian politics knows it's over plenty of liberals know it's over you know pablo rodriguez thinking about running for quebec leader uh, allegedly you have seamus o'regan who by the way i quite like a lot and respect a lot one of my favorite mm -hmm. liberals uh, who's not? Who's left cabinet and isn't isn't coming back? You know, people are going to start dropping off, and that's going to increase as the election approaches. The writing's on the wall. These guys are cooked. So we're going to do this cycle that we always do. People get sick of the liberals. They elect the Tories. They get sick of the Tories. Perhaps back to the liberals, or maybe to a two party system with the NDP. But it's it. It's cooked. It's over. Bank it. Wow, I like, bank it. I liked, I liked Steve's prediction better. <laughs> I know. David sucked. Much it was better. depressing. Yeah, also, I know. But I, 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 I just want to point out that I got somebody to say Steve's right. That's Yeah, that yeah would, we're not going to be able never, to the end of that. We can fix that in post. Owen. Yeah, we can, Owen's going to fix that in post. And uh, we'll just Dave go back to Dave does have him. a good uh, banker voice, though. He does. Okay. Yeah, it's my nerd voice. Yeah. Nerds. <laughs> Credibility. Are we allowed to swear on this podcast? <laughs> Absolutely. I oh, hope yeah. so. I hope so. Am I supposed to have a little thing under my name in the studio thing here? Nobody you can told have me about if you this. want. Just, t just t t click on it. I mean, no one's going to see it except name. us. I want it. I don't even want it. But I, <laughs> I don't even I want it if you all have it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't even want it anymore. You guys <laughs> Typical <laughs> lefty. Typical lefty. I want, I want, I want. I don't it. want it anymore. Nobody should have it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. Uh, for those of you listening to the uh, audio version of the podcast, we'll uh, see you next week. Of course, you can uh, thank you for watching and listening. Uh, you can find oh, is this on video? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can uh, find us only for paid subscribers. You can find us at podcastisbroken.ca, uh, where if you sign up with your email address, you'll get email notifications of every new episode, which we appreciate you then. And also, uh, you can find us on your favorite podcasting platform. For those of you who are paid subscribers, one, we love you because that's how the world works. You pay for things, you get things. That's right. Um, Our love is for sale. <laughs> exactly. For those of you who are paid subscribers, <laughs> please enjoy the improvised theme tune, which will be happening shortly. For everyone else, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Take care Bye. of yourselves, folks. The audio version of Podcast is Broken was produced, engineered, and edited by Owen Reynolds. The video version of the podcast was edited by Lisa Cumming. You can find past episodes and more at podcastisbroken.ca or your favorite podcast platform.